Hello everyone and welcome to my Q&A. Today we're going to discover the deepest, deepest secret of Joanna. But before we start, Alexa, play the Nutcracker. This has been such a requested video and I thought it's about time I did it because I get so many questions from you all the time. I will carry on trying to answer all your questions by Insta stories and sharing my opinion and sharing your opinion on my Insta stories, but I thought I might as well do a video that's just going to be there on YouTube uh, with some basic facts, some more generalized things. So you can just watch it whenever you feel like it. Or if you're new to Doi and I, you can just come in here and, I guess, listen. Okay, let's get started because I think there is a lot of them and I do want to cover a big chunk of it. For this specific video, I will be looking at this question under this photo here. If you didn't get a chance to ask your question, I will be doing more videos like this. So make sure in the future you leave a comment with your question. How do you deal with rejections from auditions and castings? As I'm not just a straight on model, I do model, but I'm mostly a talent. I don't go to the traditional castings where there's like a hundred girls in the room and you wait for a queue and all that kind of stuff. In my case, how it usually happens is a client will either approach my agents about me directly, so they already know they want to hire me, or a client can approach my modeling agency, I'm at Next, and say, for instance, they're looking for a specific type of girl, say like a Caucasian brunette. And then my agency will pitch the girls that they have in that kind of category. Sometimes, obviously, it depends on the client. Some girls are more commercial, some girls are more high fashion, some girls are fitter, some girls are skinnier, some girls are curvier. So it all depends on what the client is looking for, what the campaign is. That's one thing that I think a lot of girls forget when they try to get into modeling, they think that you just, they just want to do everything. They want to do, you know, Victoria's Secret, but I also want to do Dior and they also want to do Sports Illustrated and but you can't. And it happens very rarely uh, when the models are very, very big and wanted by the whole industry that they might actually cover all those categories. I think now it's changing so much because as you might have noticed, someone like Vitamon and Balenciaga, especially Vitamon, uh, they've been hiring very, very, different people to the traditional runaway casting you'd see um, at fashion weeks and they hired people of different ages, different ethnicities, different body shapes. It was more a desire to actually translate um, real life customers onto the runway. I kind of got off topic. <laughs> that is why I don't have those kind of like straight on rejections in sense of um, I'll go to a casting and they'll tell me like, oh, you're not skinny enough. As a talent, it's so much more different because I think there is a lot of respect that comes from the brands just because they're kind of more aware that you have a voice and uh, you're slightly known and you have an audience and you've worked with so many more brands. So it's not like they can directly offend you or reject you very harshly. They're a lot more careful with the language they use and the way they phrase it. So usually it will be something like, oh, we love you, but at the moment we don't feel like you communicate to the audience that we would need to tap into, uh, which would mean like, oh, you don't really work for a specific market, which sometimes usually means, oh, you know, like you're just not for us. So I think it's also a thing of understanding what you work for and what you don't and being realistic with yourself and actually setting yourself expectations that you can achieve rather than um, beating yourself up because you're not working for a specific brand or you're not doing a specific magazine. How often do you go to Moldova? Um, I'd say four times a year at the moment. I used to go a lot more while I was studying there. That actually brings me to another question um, about my studies. So I studied in Moldova even though I was accepted at a few universities in different countries. Um, and I did enroll in two universities in Bucharest, but then I decided not to pursue it because it was a schedule that wouldn't have allowed me to work on my career. And I really believed while in school that uh, for myself, I wanted myself to first 
explore what I can actually do and then spend time on learning or learn in the meantime. Actually, learn in the meantime would make more sense. But I mean, um, you know, degree-wise or diploma-wise, I never... My opinion on it has always been, you know, there, you have your whole life to get a degree. Like me, it was such a pain to go through school because I had to sit in the classes and learn things that I knew I'd never use. Even in the classes that I knew this specific subject would be useful, they wouldn't actually teach us anything life useful. I think I guess in classes was on a more theoretical level, whilst I've always been a supporter of the idea that practice is the most important thing you can do in life. And unless you actually go through things and you experience, you're never gonna know what exactly is meant to happen and you're never gonna learn. I really am bad at answering. I'm I'm such an Eastern European like that. I start talking about one thing and then I finish with something completely different. So it is pretty funny. I'm sorry if I'm boring you. <laughs> Um, your favorite movie, song, role model. My favorite movie, oh my god. Disclaimer, big anime fan here. Basically everything by Hayao Miyazaki. I think I'd say Mononoke and Spirited Away. I still don't know which one exactly, but Mononoke and Spirited Away for me. Oh, and Howl's Castle. They're kind of all in that first place for me. So I would not be able to choose one between them. Um, but then movie, actual movie wise, I guess my favorite movies would be, or at least the idea in my head of those movies, the way I remember them, would be Interstellar, just because I'd never left a movie feeling that weird. No, I, I'd never, I never finished a movie before in a cinema and just sat there, unable to move. So I think that was like the most impactful movie maybe? Obviously the Harry Potter saga, uh, Lord of the Ring. I'm a, like a very, very big fan of, uh, of magic and fantasies. And then all the superhero movies, but superhero movies aren't really... I like them, but I don't think they're... Most of them aren't really great um, directing and, uh, and script. I really don't know. Like I watch so many movies and... I think I prefer TV shows to movies, to be honest, though. Nine and a half weeks. So predictable. <laughs> Song. Now, music-wise, you should know about me. I'm super obsessed with soundtracks. I love Hans Zimmer, Clint Mansell, Max Richter. I can literally listen to soundtracks for hours and hours and hours. I'll just turn on like a Hans Zimmer playlist on my notebook. I'm such a big Hans Zimmer fan. You have no idea. Like, I basically made sure I went to last Coachella just so I can listen to Hans Zimmer in real life. I didn't care about anyone else. I just wanted to listen to Hans Zimmer. And then I have this thing, like, I'm very weird like that. I'll be in, I'll be in a location somewhere with uh, people and then I'll hear a sound and I'll be like, shut up everyone. They're like, what's happening? What's happening? I'm like, this is, this is, this is Inception by Hans Zimmer. I always have this thing. It's almost like a personal challenge. I need to identify what the soundtrack is. I'm still trying to remember. I have it in my head. I have it in my head. I have it. It can, it can get pretty, pretty sad. Maybe you don't want to go out with me. Role model. Role model. Um, it's a big category. My idol has always been Elizabeth the first. Um, I guess other strong female figures in politics and history as well, but Elizabeth I specifically because she was just such a great example of um, of self-control and power and victory and setting up an example for the rest of the world. So Elizabeth is kind of always, when I read something about her or when I watch documentaries and movies about her, it kind of always you know, when, when your breath gets cut away and you're just in oh, that's, that's kind of how I feel about her. So that would be my major, major, major woman crush. I do really love Audrey Hepburn. I know it's kind of cliche, but I, I love the way she was, one, elegant, of course, and her sense of style. But mostly I love her life history, which is very sad. And um, what she went through and how much she actually went on helping people. Uh, it just fascinates me. 
So uh, she definitely is one great role model for me. Present day, I'd say I'm really obsessed with Amal Clooney, like majorly obsessed. I think I've watched every single court hearing that I found on YouTube with her. She's just so intelligent and she's just so driven. And she's one of those women that has achieved so much on her own and actually dislikes her husband, her partner's popularity and how it sometimes conflicts with what she stands for. And sometimes it's sad when I watch interviews of her promoting a good cause. Um, for instance, I remember watching this one where she was being interviewed together with uh, the ex-president of Maldives' wife um, and talking about you know the dictatorship in Maldives and how he was imprisoned and all that. And then the interviewer just kept asking her, you know, oh, do you think, um, you know, uh, George Clooney's PR can help for this? Oh, how do you feel uh, to be George Clooney's wife? And all that kind of random stuff that had nothing to do with the important issues she was actually there for. So I am such a big fan of her, of what she stands for. And I just, I just really love her. And she's actually, she, that's, that's a perfectly uh, good point that brings me to my previous point. Um, like people like her and Audrey Hepburn are great examples of how you can be both fashionable and beautiful and elegant and sexy and attractive but s intelligent at the same time and I think that is a big issue that we have in society today if you're a woman that dresses a certain way or looks a certain way you can't also be intelligent or you can't also have your own opinion which absolutely kills me every time how often do you exercise um actually now since the beginning of 2018 my routine has really changed so i haven't really gone to the gym much but what ha i have been doing is 20 minutes yoga every day and i i still i used to hate yoga and i still dislike yoga in sense okay let me clarify, no offense there, yogis. I think yoga is beautiful, but I'm a very active person and I love you know, boxing, dancing. I love things that actually make me move and make me kind of throw out my energy. Whilst yoga is very static, it took a lot of self-control for me to start practicing yoga every single day because I prefer to do so many more things than yoga. But the reason that I started doing it is I have a really bad back and last year, because of all the traveling, especially long haul traveling, my back got so bad that even like the massage sessions I was having every day could not fix it. So I just made myself start practicing yoga because otherwise I just could not sit, I couldn't sleep, I was feeling so sick. So I was getting to a point where I just couldn't do anything. And then yoga, just three weeks it's been since I started practicing yoga and I'm just doing it on my own. I'm just using an app. Um, I just literally do more like stretches and basic yoga poses. Okay, I'm now in the headstand challenge. However, I did start with quite, you know, simple stretches and uh, breathing techniques and it just helped me so, so much. I am very happy. I believe in um, weights and building muscle uh, against cellulite and for body strength and body health. So I will start doing weights again. I'll start going to the gym. I'll start doing cardio. Normally when I do that, I'll go like three times to the gym and I'll still do like a half an hour um, exercising at home every single day. What did you want to be when you were little? I wanted to be a superhero. Seriously, like a superhero or a superhero magician superhero. I guess they're still superheroes if they're saving the world. As little, I actually had trouble um, dealing with reality. Um, I used to think that I had hidden magic powers that would let me save the world. I was so desperate to help the world and save the world. Everything that kind of came afterwards, like everything I've wanted to do in my life since I was little, has been to somehow impact society in one way or another. But yeah, I did really want to be like a witch saving people or a super woman and meet a human and then i wanted to be president of my country you can see how you can get to to there from superhero i guess what were some of your career defining moments 
What were some of my career defining moments? Um, some of my career defining moments were definitely moving to London, signing up with my agency which opened a lot of doors for me, little kind of milestones like being featured a few times in Forbes, um, either in top 19 entrepreneurs or um, top 30 and 30. I think those, you know, they didn't actually impact my career. I, no one really cares about that, but it was a very nice little milestone for me. That was definitely a big career milestone. And then obviously working with amazing brands like Dior, Louis Vuitton, Bulgari. I think career is defined by what you feel rather than what others feel. What motivates you and how do you keep yourself on track? I think, you know, a really important thing is to sometimes bring yourself back to reality by looking at what you want to achieve in like the next year, the next five years, the next ten years, like the house you want to buy, the car you want to buy, the school you want to send your kids to, all that kind of stuff. Calculate how much that's going to cost and then see what your bank account's like and see what your investments are like and then you're like, okay, so I still got to work so yeah I'm, I'm just gonna get off this couch and, and start working <laughs> just look at what you want to achieve in life you know in the next five years or so and see how you're doing and then calculate it, how long it's gonna take you to achieve that if you're just not doing anything and I think that will motivate you pretty fast what made you want to become a model have you always wanted to be a model uh, not at all um, I think modeling kind of came accidentally as many of you might know I started my blog when I was 16 and it kind of went from there then when I moved to London I got signed by my agency who signed me both as a model and as a talent and I guess to be honest when I was a teenager I did kind of want to model I think I'd just gone past puberty I was always made fun of in school as being like the tallest girl so I was like, you know, I might as well try and do something with this burden on my shoulders. However, as a teenager, I always got told like my face wasn't right for modeling. I didn't have like the very sharp, scanty cheekbones. I didn't have the blue eyes. I didn't have the like whitish hair. But now the industry has really changed. You see more athletic bodies and you see more kind of next door girls or you see sexier women rather than very like high fashion and it just happened naturally you know so why why not however I don't like being labeled as a model because I'm not really a model like I'm a lot more outside of that just like I don't want to be labeled as an Instagrammer actually sometimes when I do interviews someone will call me on Instagram and I'm like it's that's that's not quite what I do you know I still go around the world and I do like I give speeches at conferences and I do business consulting and it's you can't like put all of that into oh Instagram or oh model uh, to me it's a bit like mm, mm, <laughs> don't limit me the favorite country and why oh my god oh my god I can answer that that's like the first question that I can actually actually answer direct Japan 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 all I've been dreaming about since I was 19 and I visited 19 or 20 and I visited Japan 19 is to go back Japan has completely stolen my heart I always knew that I loved Japan and it was one of those places where I went and I didn't get disappointed like I did with New York uh, I literally went and I was like oh my god I love this country even more just everything from history of Japan um, its development the mentality and the culture of people is absolutely fascinating and I have never seen anything like that anywhere in the world. Um, the art, the nature, the architecture, I just like, I do feel like in my past lives, I don't quite believe in past lives, but if I did have a past life, I was probably born somewhere in Asia because I'm a big, big admirer of Asian culture. Tips for success in social media. That is a good one and I think you know, there is no key to success. I would say that, of course, you probably hear this from everyone because it is the truth. You have to be different and you have to really find your niche and you have to find how you can stand out. Uh, the, the age where everyone was doing pretty flat lays and just posting them to Instagram and getting thousands and thousands of followers is gone. Now there are so many users and you have to stand out and you have to really be different. 
and you have to be true to yourself because unless you're true to yourself you can't be different you'll still end up doing what others do and i think just find your approach even if you want to be in quite a mainstream industry on social media still find your approach to communicate that industry and definitely time investment and in waiting for it to happen because it doesn't happen overnight and it does need a lot a lot of work a lot of effort put in a lot of posting always regular posting regular interaction with your fans so don't give up and just make sure you keep working on it and you're always coming up with new ideas and you're always innovating. I think I might have to do another video in Russian and Romanian because I have quite a lot of questions. Guys, I have to run now to my appointment. This has kind of taken a lot longer than I expected. I will do another video. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this and make sure you keep sending me questions and make sure you follow me on Instagram and interact with me and you know, look at my polls and answer them. I really love seeing your opinions, love learning what other people know, what other people have seen or hear about new experiences. So please, please, please join the tribe and I love you all.